Our genetic variations affect so much about who we are, including the ways drugs interact with our bodies. Did you know, for example, 40% of the population gets very little pain relief from codeine? Here to tell us more, including tips on making sure your medication works for you, is WSJ Health and Science Senior Editor Melinda Beck. Melinda, great to have you here. Hi, Tanya. So what exactly do our genetic differences affect when it comes to drugs? The way our bodies absorb and release medication? It, exactly, and, and a, an awful lot of medications, something like 75% of all the common ones, go through five key liver enzymes, which really, and uh, gene variations that almost all of us have some of, affect whether those enzymes work fast or slow, and that can really make a big, a big difference in how people react to medications. Absolutely. So for instance, I might have an enzyme that allows a drug to go in my body and right out without affecting me. Correct? Right, right. And, and not getting much effect that you want either. Right. Or, or conversely, it might linger and have too much of an effect. Exactly. Is that right? Oh, yes. So how then can we figure this out? Is there an <laughs> easy test that will... There, there are a number of tests now that look for specific variations in these genes that have been, been identified and there are whole categories of poor metabolizers, ultra rapid metabolizers, and that can help doctors figure out whether you need a higher dose to get the same effect or whether you should really find a drug that treats the same problem but through a different enzyme pathway. And are those tests just sort of swabs in our mouth? Cheek swab Cheek for the swabs. most part. Okay, yes. so easy, simple, but yet there still are some some skeptics in the medical community. Well, this is a new and I think very exciting field, but it's still it's still quite new. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of major medical associations are looking for are the kind of large-scale randomized controlled tests that a lot of drugs go through. Um, it's hard to do them on in an area like this when what you're really looking for is kind of outliers, right. people who are right. unusual and don't metabolize drugs the way everybody else does. And yet in cancer treatments, they've been doing this for a while, correct? Yes, and particularly when um, you know a, a drug has to be very precisely tailored not only to that person's genes, but also to the tumor's genes. Right. So it, it, it is fairly far in adv it advanced in, um, in cancer, but we're seeing how it can make a big difference in very run-of-the-mill medications, too. Antidepressants. Antidepressants right. right. Now, what, there are cases, though, where it can be potentially deadly if you don't get this right. Well, and as we've seen, some drugs, um, uh, the blood thinner warfarin, for example, uh, quite a, a, a fair, fair sized minority of people can have a lot of trouble with it and can bleed to death. And testing them in advance um, could well help avoid some of those mm -hmm. problems. In fact, there's something like 700,000 adverse drug reactions that send people to emergency oh, rooms my goodness. in the U.S. every year. It's so scary. So do you recommend we should all just go to our doctor and get that little cheek swab, or is it something that insurance doesn't pay for? How does it work? Insurance is still very spotty. Okay. Um, and not everybody needs this, um, but if you are taking drugs that you don't think are working very well, if you've had a lifetime of medical mysteries and things that are unexplained. Right. If you're contemplating surgery or you know, taking an awful lot of medications that may be interacting um, in odd ways, this, it might be useful to check right? this out. Yeah. Yes. All right, Melinda Beck, thank you so much. That's really okay. valuable information.